in the rapidly changing landscape of talent attraction and acquisition, staying ahead of the curve is more critical than ever. From the rise of remote work to the integration of cutting-edge technologies, the ways in which companies attract and retain top talent are evolving at breakneck speed. Joining us today to unpack these changes and share invaluable insights is Emmanuel Gabriel, the head of talent attraction and acquisition at PwC Luxembourg. With over 10 years of experience, he has witnessed firsthand the shifts in recruitment strategies, the growing importance of diversity and inclusion, and the transformative power of technology in finding and engaging the best talent. Our second guest is Solenti Neves, our current intern who just completed a six-month internship with us and who will share her view as a true Gen Z. Hello, how are you today? Very good. Good, good. good. Yeah. Sunny Friday. We're not used to that. Nope. Team building in the afternoon. Team building in yes. the afternoon. So well. Len's last day as well. Yes. Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> And last podcast for you, right? Yeah, last one after over two years. Last bit episode. Of emotions. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, it's a bit mm -mm. sad to not longer do it, but also happy to see someone else take on the challenge and continue the project and maybe also bring on some fresh ideas. Well, That's definitely. Good. At least uh, let's enjoy the, the discussion today and let's have fun. Yes. Yes. I'm very, very happy to do it with the both of you, to do it with my own team. Mm -hmm. It was something that was really important to me. So thanks to both of you already. Our oh, pleasure. So let's start with the first question. How have you seen the talent acquisition landscape evolve over the past decade? Well, uh, super fast. And if you're mentioning uh, actually a decade, it's uh, the time that I've spent at PwC Luxembourg. So I started uh, 2014 uh, and uh, I started as a junior recruiter, uh, well, specifically for tax. And I have to say that the, the context at that, um, at that moment was a bit different than what we've experienced actually all over the last 10 years. And if I look specifically at Uh, COVID and how it has uh, accelerated the way we work with uh, remote interviews as we were mostly used to have like face to face that was the norm uh, but many other aspects that uh, that for sure uh, I can I can talk for hours uh, but I will try to to, to remain to the points um, so um, well technological um, I would say that the technology and all the new um, um, tools that are now available on the market are definitely changing the way we recruit and the way that we can actually dedicate more time mm -hmm. to what is to me uh, the, the, the most important um, um, element in the, in the job of a recruiter is the, the candidate experience and that the contact that you have both with, with the candidates And at the same time with your internal clients, because you are actually the person coordinating pretty much uh, the, the entire process. So that's what I would say uh, as, a, as, a, as a biggest one. Um, the, the, the job market for sure has changed a lot uh, versus uh, 10 years ago, where we were kind of attracting um, uh, differently uh, our, our profiles no social networks or I would say that mm. they were kind of uh, taking a bigger part mm. of our um, our our daily uh, life but it has entered more and more into the reality of a recruiter mm. and um, that's that's for sure uh, a, a big topic that we we're going to discuss today. And what are the most significant trends in talent attraction and acquisition that have emerged recently? Well, uh, there are many, uh, difficult to, to list all of them, but if we have to, to look specifically at, uh, at one thing is, um, uh, is AI and automation and, uh, and how, um, and how the, 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 the recruiters are actually leveraging on, on many tools to make their life easier. Uh, we were, we were uh, discussing a bit earlier about um, about uh, the impact, but it is really about um, uh, simplifying some of the most redundant tasks mm -hmm. and helping really to focus time on the most 
um, uh, added value part. Um, so AI and automation for sure, and looking for efficiency in the process. Mm -hmm. um, I would say that um, employer branding is becoming more and more dominant in the uh, in the um, in the role of attracting actually and sourcing the right uh, talents in, in in depending on the on the different uh, uh, pools of talent and um, and integrating actually uh, many different dimensions that um, appear to be more and more important for well the Gen Z because it is uh, it is a topic and our companies are adapting and shifting the way they recruit well it is time to adapt adapt to new expectations mm -hmm. adapt to new ways of approaching work mm -hmm. and if you re if you really want to be on top of the game well you would have to look at well my big four um, <laughs> uh, elements that i would like to to, to share with you and, and, and for sure that, uh, that, that many of the, of the new generation entering into the workforce is paying attention to is, well, all the elements related to and questions related to diversity, inclusion, and how you make actually the experience as well inclusive for everyone mm -hmm. and, make, and, and showing how you care about uh, in, uh, inclusiveness of, of many different um, minorities within a company. Um, well-being, well-being, one um, being one of the um, the, the the main uh, um, point of attention as well uh, for the new generation, uh, and we 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 kind of have the stereotype of them looking really at the clock, ending on time, <laughs> and not doing extra hours. Maybe they are actually setting the tone for us mm. and encouraging us to, to to change a bit the way mm. uh, to work, but definitely. Um, uh, when you have something to offer and when you take care of the well-being of your employees, well, just share it. Mm. Share it and, 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 and um, showcase actually those, um, those uh, dimensions to your, to your future um, uh, potential talents. Um, well, all the ESG dimension, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, and... Uh, and um, Looking for purpose is one of the other uh, main um, pattern of the of the this um, generation, or as it is described, and um, and showing how a, a firm or company is um, taking all of these aspects into the way uh, they govern. Mm -hmm. So the governance. Um, the, the 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 actions uh, made uh, to impact the society or the planet are for sure uh, something that more and more uh, candidates are looking at Glassdoor and social networks, right? Mm. <laughs> so we have our Gen Z today with us here in the form yes. of our intern Solen. So what is close to you? Because you applied at PwC as yes. a candidate yes. and then you took on the role as recruiter. Yeah. What do you feel like is particularly important for you and also maybe for your generation? Yeah. I think that kind of experience is definitely a key point for a company. Um, I mean, you need to really feel a connection within the company with the people that you're going to meet. So recruiters, but also with the managers, you know, from the business and everything. So I really think that today it's something super important for people. I know it because I've met different people for interviews and I know that I got the feeling, you know, when you meet someone from like a couple of minutes, the first one, and you know, you know directly. So I think it's something really important because it's also for me what the company is going to look like inside, you know, it's like what is showing, but it's like reality, you know, mm -hmm. so I think people are really, really like looking for it. I mean, super, super important. And even within the company, when you enter the company, you need to stay in the company. So sure. for sure, you need, you know, the attraction um, and so on. So yeah, super important. And on the part that Manu mentioned on like flexibility and well-being, do you think your generation has higher standards or maybe more strict because it's closer to their heart? I think people now really want their work-life balance. It's important for them. Um, so definitely if the company have something to offer for like, you know, well-being. So as PwC, we have meditation, we have 
like room and everything. People are looking for it, you know, because you have your work, but you need also to have those dimensions, you know, to have everything in it. Manu, I think we can learn something from the new generation. Uh, maybe we <laughs> should. Absolutely. I mean, uh, being being open minded and and uh, and uh, always trying to put your yourself in in other shoes is is something important because they have fresh ideas and uh, they they are really committed to 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 develop and to grow themselves mm. into the organization. So I believe that uh, it is a it is a nice time, right, where we have the possibility to have kind of. At this moment, uh, four generations in the same company, like uh, from from Gen X, millennials, Gen Z, um, and um, well, this is um, this is a, a really a crossroad, uh, yeah. and um, and well, it is not easy even as a as a firm to mm. as a company to to adapt to the different needs, um, to the different expectations and uh, what is really making people uh, staying. So, yeah, yes. The question about equity and equality, yeah. it's a big one nowadays. It, no, no, it is, it is a big one. And uh, I will really want to bounce back on, on what Sonen was saying because uh, attracting and finding the right channel to attract the, 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 the right um, talent pool and the right talents is one thing. But what we tend to see is that the, the, the attrition and the retention is as well super important. And uh, we see as, as a trend maybe more people leaving rapidly because you need to deliver on the promises. And um, and uh, this is uh, something that we need to 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 learn from this, and that would be one of my uh, advice for for companies uh, looking at, at attracting people: be transparent. Be transparent, as uh, as the disappointment can be can be important, mm. and delivering on the promises is uh, for me an important value in the Sounds job we do. so simple, but in, pra in practice it is so hard to accomplish. Being transparent and on the right things in the right way, communicate about it. Not always an easy task. Absolutely. <laughs> you already briefly touched on the next topic about technology and how it will change and shape the future of recruitment. So how do you see the, the role of technology in modern talent acquisition? And how has it changed the way that you operate or maybe also we as a team? Um, fascinating question, uh, for sure. Um, so uh, if, I look, uh, if I look at this question from the, the, the PwC lens, um, we uh, aim at saying that this world and this way of approaching recruitment is human-led and tech-powered. Tech power is important, but keeping in mind that it is still human-led. Um, we've noticed so many improvements in the way that we can, well, right now, advertise and ask, uh, well, Microsoft Copilot or ChatGBT <laughs> yeah. without naming others that can help you to uh, quickly work on your job descriptions. And asking even more ChatGPT to be more inclusive, mm -hmm. learning with the tool and uh, looking at what the what is the results of this um, of of, of uh, uh, this exercise, and, and and typically still keeping the eye of the human on the result and the outcome to ensure that what is reflected is really the reality. So keeping the critical uh, thinking is important. But when you look at uh, the, 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 the performance of the new application tracking system, so, so mm -hmm. the tools where candidates are applying, how they are uh, actually, um, um, let's say, uh, all connected to many different uh, uh, future uh, processes to, to, to hire the people. Um, when you look at the online assessments that are... Um, well, uh, appearing more and more on the market, mm -hmm. you have uh, tons of 
assessment tools and it's really like uh, uh, going to, to do shopping and look really at what fits best to your values, to your process, to internal clients and well, to the experience that you want to, to, to deliver to the, to, the, to the candidate. Because in the end, all those tools for me are supporting the recruiters to be more efficient and to offer the best experience possible to the candidates and I, I will I will uh, focus specifically on the on um, one of the tools that we've uh, decided to to use uh, over the last two years is for onboarding and virtual reality and how you help basically uh, people to project themselves in the, the, the well the first day at work but at the same time when you go to campus events and you would like to show a bit more about the premises, the building, and so on. And having this possibility to give a, 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 a flavor of what's inside is, uh, yeah. is definitely a game changer. Yeah. And what do you think are the biggest challenges that we are currently facing in attracting and also acquiring the top talents in the market? And now we talk about this quite a lot. <laughs> well... First of all, challenging question. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Don't want to make it too easy on you. <laughs> no, 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 no. I got it. I got it. Um, there, are, there, there are so many challenges that we are facing uh, right now. At, at As you said uh, uh, um, nicely, um, attracting and acquiring because you have to, to, to differentiate the two. And, and, and for me... Uh, being still um, uh, connected, uh, you need to, re to, 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 to be even more expert. Uh, the more we, 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 we advance over the years. And uh, I, I can give you some numbers that are for me um, uh, uh, super fascinating. Uh, we receive uh, between 35,000 and 40,000 applications per year. Well, at PwC. Uh, and when when you look just at this, it is a it is in essence a challenge. Oh yeah, <laughs> opening them every day, screening them every day, it is a challenge. <laughs> uh, definitely. Uh, so that's that's one um, that's one big challenge. Uh, as we were discussing earlier, um, uh, the 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 new generation is a topic, and when I'm saying this, is about something that we. M We debated with uh, Delphine, uh, our new HR director, mm -hmm. uh, passionate about recruitment. And uh, I discussed uh, this topic uh, recently with her. And we had, um, we had a, 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 a nice analysis about the situation. Uh, we, we are in a world of uh, consumption. We are consuming a lot. Mm -hmm. And when something is uh, missing as a book to read, then you go on a certain platform, maybe I will not mention the name, and you book, uh, um, and you buy a book, and you have it uh, at home two days maybe. later. And when we want something, well, we have plenty of choices. Mm. And you know what? This is what candidates are experiencing right now. Well, many opportunities, many chances to discover new roles, Many recruiters reaching out to them uh, on LinkedIn. Oh, yeah. And uh, they are over solicited. Mm. And uh, then it means that it creates volatility. Mm -hmm. That's what we were discussing earlier about, mm. uh, about attracting them, but keeping them inside. Yes. Uh, and uh, um, actually, I found a, a great um, uh, article. Uh, on the Resume Lab, uh, saying that um, 83% actually of the Gen Z are qualified as job opers. I was super impressed about this number, or I was um, definitely questioning myself <laughs> reading this this um, this statistic because it means that uh, you need to keep them actually engaged. engaged and looking for solutions. So the better you advertise, mm. the better as well you should deliver inside and, and, and keep them. So, well, those are for sure the challenges. And um, if you look strictly in Luxembourg, well, 
the challenges are that following the COVID, now we are entering to a, mo a, a mode where you have more and more remote work. Mm -hmm. Luxembourg has something quite unique with this. So we need to be inventive and mm -hmm. still giving kind of a flexibility. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it is a great illustration of how companies are um, trying to solve problems And when we are not able to offer full remote work for French residents, then we offer them, or, or German or, or, or Belgium, we offer them satellite offices. So this, these are the challenges of what a company should be able to overcome, is trying to find solutions and being creative, mm -hmm. at least trying. Because uh, in Luxembourg, with the cost of living, with the housing, uh, sometimes difficulties, uh, addition. Uh, uh, Additioning this to what we covered mm. earlier, well. Mm. So then, in addition to what Manu just said, what would you be on the lookout for to apply f to a company like, mm, I think that's a great match? Mm. I think it's really in terms of what they propose inside. As Manu said, I think today it's about flexibility for employees. So if you join the company, are they going to, you know, allow you to go to satellite offices? Are you going to do remote work and everything? So it's really about finding a work balance, I would say. Mm -hmm. I don't think people today are like that attracted, you know, to environment super stressful. Like in my generation, I know it. Um, so I think it's really about finding the balance and also about things that they can propose, you know, for the employee. Um, the value also are super important, I would say, for, for a company. Mm -hmm. Um, and people usually go for it because they can feel that it's a match because it's what they are and they want to join the company. Mm. And also you need to kind of feel the walk to talk what Manu mentioned earlier. You're yeah. proposing a value, but is all the content that you're actually putting out there also aligned mm -hmm. with exactly. you propose? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. I think about this, about the value, it's like something, you know, like super like matching also with what you want in the company. Um, so I think it's it's an important point. Yeah. What advice, Manu, would you give to organizations looking to stay ahead in the competitive market? Well, um, to, to be, uh, I would say, innovative, and investing in uh, in technology, uh, at least being curious, mm -hmm. being curious and uh, connecting uh, with many um, uh, solutions existing on the market and um, and exploring uh, and uh, trying to to reimagine well the possible. That's that's uh, what I would that's what I would um, uh, keep as a as a, as an important uh, step. Um, for me, that's definitely investing in the candidate experience and employer branding. Mm -hmm. I'm even r repeating myself here, but that's definitely how you can ensure that uh, you're able to deliver uh, and 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 bring the the candidates at the right moment at the right place. And uh, it's it's not an easy equation. No. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. Uh, but um but really work on the um, on the on the branding and your employee value proposition uh, mm. because uh, there is a, a close connection to this. And um and think about the impact the impact of all your uh, social posts about what alumni are saying about your company, what your current mm -hmm. employees are saying, no, even on Glassdoor, because even if it is not that advanced or, mm -hmm. let's say, Europe, but utilizing Europe, but... Uh, it's male, huge in America. It, it, it is huge. Mm. And, uh, and I truly trust on this because when I, you know, when, when I go to a restaurant, I go on TripAdvisor. Well, and uh, I always like, you know, to, to know where I go and not be disappointed. Well, do the same, do the same. And you have yeah. plenty of opportunities to actually yeah. leverage on, 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 on how we showcase who we are and, and where you can, you can better learn mm -hmm. about, about your, your future company as a candidate. Yeah. I mean, yeah. now I'm curious as a Gen Z, yes. where do you look for jobs? Like what social media challenge, challenges are you even like looking at? 
So I've come from a generation, we went mm -hmm. on the career side to find a job. Mm -hmm. Social media was not a thing back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It definitely is today. Like, for example, if you take, like, for example, LinkedIn or something, mm -hmm. people are really looking for it, I would say, to find job position. Yeah. Um, also, a website for sure. Uh, it's really important. So again, it's how you show your company. It's like how you present yeah. it because candidates are going to come to the website and see. Um, so it's uh, it's uh, important, you know, for the candidate. And yeah. just to to talk a bit about what Manu just said, I think it's also about what you present because the candidate is going to present itself, but you have to present the company, like why it should join, you know. So it's also about selling, I would say, uh, your company to the candidates for him to choose you, actually. That's a tough challenge. And, and, and it, is, it is exactly the definition of moving from uh, a, an, a, an employer market to yeah. a candidate market, mm -hmm. yeah. where they have sometimes three, four pending offers in the pockets uh, meeting you at this moment. <laughs> and, and actually, <laughs> you, need, yeah. you need to work hard. Yeah. On, uh, yeah. I you so. learn very fast how to sell a job to a candidate. Now, to understand what's important to them and how you can leverage on what the company is doing. Yeah. I think that's also like being a good recruit, understanding, okay, I hear you from what you're saying, what is important to you. Mm. So we're also able to tell you what we do and show you, okay, we walk the talk, like this is something we offer, but also what does it mean for me as an employee? Mm. So what I can tell sometimes, and I think you do the same because I did a few interviews with you. It's mm -hmm. like sharing my point of view Yeah. So people feel like also, ah, this is not just something I put on social media. Mm -hmm. This is always someone who has been here for a while or just recently joined has already experienced. Yeah. In the in, in the end, you, you you have to show to the candidates that actually it's going to be a good experience working with them and you're going to spend more time with them than your partner mm -hmm. or your friends. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> In, in I see end. you more often yeah. than my parents, so. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, that's, that's um, definitely uh, yeah. something uh, paramount here. And there's another challenge. How do you align the strategy of your recruitment and attraction with the business goals of the company? Because we all know that there can be a mismatch from time to time. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> That is only that the easy questions today on a Friday morning. Oh yes, yes, yes! You challenge me, challenge me so, so, so hard. Um, I would say that um, I'm I'm still learning on 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 that end. Huh? Uh, being in this position for for now 12 months, uh, and um, and I would say that our challenge at PwC Luxembourg is as, is being able to. A balance between uh, quantity while still keeping quality and at the same time going into very niche recruitments and 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 um, and situations where you need to be super agile mm. that would be that would be uh how do i try and how how i'm i'm trying to 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 inspire Uh, my 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 great recruitment team about um, looking more transversally about how we can do the job and looking for mm. solutions and typically here sometimes we need uh, an important number of candidates for specific projects or or, 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 or an assignment or client assignment that is uh, a, um, a deal signed and we have rapidly to find a huge amount of people yeah And while we were maybe waiting for the situation to happen 10 years ago, today they expect you to have at least 50, 70 prospects on your uh, LinkedIn folder mm -hmm. being right away capable of, of, of convert them, transfer them into potential candidates. That's really the, 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 the most important challenge in how you're trying to align is being to be uh, capable of balancing between quantity quality niche markets and without a strong sourcing uh, capability and function uh, you, you are actually less capable of doing the job 
And if if you look at what we are trying to implement right now, is about giving the role to the people that have the best and the higher impact in the process, mm. meaning that leverage on your existing population and your employees that are actually your ambassadors. Well, referral is is for me something that is uh, um, uh, a differentiator, and that is. Uh, kind of decentralizing the uh, sourcing um, um, efforts. Mm -hmm. You're well placed to to understand this yes. because we are, we are working on <laughs> on, on, together, yeah. on this project. And um, and um, what I'm I, I believe is a game changer is as well when you reach out proactively to a can, to a to a, a candidate on LinkedIn that is not looking for a job. The hiring manager being the person doing this can have a way bigger impact. Definitely. Let's be honest. They have 100 recruiters in the inbox for some positions. We so, even if you try to personalize the message, it's going to be some type of template of what the other have already sent. Yeah. yeah no. That's that's um, reading reading articles, looking at the at the efficiency rates that we have when it is sometimes. Uh, an HR recruiter doing this or if it is the hiring manager doing this well studies and, and concrete uh, um, uh, feedback that we've seen uh, in the reality are actually uh, impressive impressive well you already touched I think throughout the entire podcast you can kind of tell that candidate experience is the focus and should be the focus for every company here in Luxembourg or generally speaking trying to recruit people so what practices do you find most effective? Um, it is, it is um, more and more um, a dimension that is, um, that is um, something to be uh, taken into consideration by um, the, the recruitment team. Well, typically at, in, in our team, what we wanted to do is to um work on the name of the team and actually um uh look more at at uh, an attraction center mm. an attraction center being actually a, a a function where uh the company the firm can better look at the market uh better look at what uh, candidates or um uh, people or um or let's say talking about the company. Um, I would say that in addition to that, um, it is um, ab about um, being more, I was saying earlier, inclusive and uh, applying the 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 DEI um, the DEI uh, notion into all the different steps that we have, because the more you offer. Let's let's say the, the the capacity of uh, the the candidates to feel themselves in the process, the better you increase the chances that at the end, even if you're not gonna match the salary's expectations, some of the other elements that you brought in the discussion in the exchanges will make the difference. Um, so this is what I would um, I would name as the um, as elements that I have in mind um, to this point. And so then, having been a recruiter here at PwC, mm -hmm. you were part of the entire transformation of our team. Mm -hmm. You stepped in when we are basically revamping everything we do. So you're also part of like giving more feedback to candidates, more yeah. proactively reaching out. Yeah. What do you think has changed or had the biggest impact on the candidate experience? Mm -hmm. I think for me, it's really about the follow up, about the communication. So really about following, you know, all the candidates. So when you say about feedback, I think it's super important and we can feel candidate need feedback. You know, we're always, OK, do you want feedback? Do you want, you know, um, any you know response of like how did it went for your interview? Mm -hmm. 
So I think people are also, they want to understand sometimes, you know, why maybe it didn't work for them or anything. So I think communication is really, really something super important for the candidate experience. Mm -hmm. Because even if we don't recruit the candidate, the candidate is going to speak about the company, about how it went. So it's really about also afterwards, all of it created because of the recruitment process. And... Uh It is uh, sometimes really depressing to read on some social media about candidates complaining about not having a feedback following a, a, an interview yes. with uh, different recruiters or a company and lefting, uh, leaving them alone for three weeks, a month. Um, so that's, that's, in my opinion, what, what, what makes the difference uh, today. Mm -hmm is about how you take care at all the processes mm. you communicate as you, 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 you say it on the what to expect as a next step, what is actually our recruitment process and how it is advertised on our career website, mm. what actually uh, candidates can do and prepare to be at their best mm. in an interview. That's mm -hmm. what we are all looking yeah. at uh, to show the best version of ourselves and uh, ensuring that we increase the probabilities of, of a match and a success. That's, that's, what, um, that's what makes the difference and where we see and notice candidates um, actually making the difference uh, with different uh, companies they are having interviews. Thank you so much to the both of you for joining me today for this episode. It was a, it was a pleasure. Yeah, thank, thank you, you and Catherine. And with that, we wrap up my final episode of Casual Sight. It's been an incredible journey and thank you for being part of this adventure. Anais, who you have already met in a previous episode, will follow in my footsteps. I wish her all the best for this project and maybe we will hear each other again when she'll invite me for an episode. Thank you for joining us today. That's it for today's episode. And if you don't want to miss out on our upcoming stories, hit subscribe and feel free to share. Let us know what you think. Thank you for listening and see you for the next season of Casual Side.